Hey there guys, my name is Bizzleberry. I am a support grandmaster as of today. Um, making guides for support primarily, but also making some educational content with tier lists and gameplay stuff as well. Recently I've been doing a fill uh, in flex little series, which I hope you guys are enjoying on YouTube. That should be out on YouTube for June. So look forward to that. Uh, today we're going to be doing a in-depth Zyra guide. I've done one with Senna as well very recently. But this one is for Zyra. We're going to be talking about runes, item builds, skill orders, a couple of combos in regarding her abilities. There's some advanced things that you, everyone should be aware of. Uh, and some special interactions with dragons and neutral objectives as well. If you find this kind of content useful for you and helpful, don't forget thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, and also if you're watching on this Twitch stream as well, twitch.tv slash Bizzleberry, click the follow button. All right, do that. Okay, so Zyra is a little bit more complicated than some of the other supports. There's a lot of different things going on in a different, two different big builds here. Uh, the primary build that you'll be always be looking towards will be Electrocute. Electrocute will give you the most DPS during lane, um, but it can be difficult if you're against two poke champions on the bot side. So this is a build if you are able to consistently land three attacks against the enemy. This includes your plants. So Electrocute, Keystone, uh, Taste of Bud. You have the other option as well here to go into Cheap Shot, but I personally prefer having a little bit of extra sustain in the laning phase. But if you feel like you can handle without it, then Cheap Shot is a very good option as well as you can proc that relatively often. Then you go into Eyeball Collection as well as a very risk-free rune you can uh, that is like standard if you're feeling a little bit more fancy then you can take either the ghost pro or the zombie ward ghost pro is probably the best one as uh, you're more likely to be able to get some wards slightly deeper into enemy brushes over the walls maybe um, so that will spawn the pro and then spot someone out for the extra adapter four stacks but eyeball collection is the most um, basic kind of rune that you can go there and the most reliable Third rune here, Ravenous Hunter. Ravenous Hunter gives you, once again, similar to the Taste of Blood, gives you some decent health regen in lane. It's definitely saved me a few times in the mid game as well. Otherwise, if you're not a fan of the self-healing, you can also go into Relentless Hunter if you're looking to be roaming around a little bit more in a, in a particular game. Um, or you could do Ultimate Hunter if you're feeling a little bit greedy. Secondary options. Um, I would say you could go into sorcery, but inspiration I feel is currently absolute best right now. Uh, biscuits is absolutely vital to the build as you will need some form of sustain. You can't just run these runes and have no mana regen at all, especially early. And magical footwear I believe is the strongest secondary rune in the entire game. You get you save 300 gold on boots and then you get plus 10 movement speed as well. If you are against a team where you feel like you could be under threat quite a lot early maybe a hard engage ad carry and support like maybe you're playing against the leona and a lucian you may want to opt out of the magical boots and you could go into stopwatch as well so it prevents you being from tower dived around level level six otherwise you could do biscuits and cosmic insight that way you'll be able to buy boots a little bit earlier in the laning phase to get out of those skill shots a little bit more. Um, but as I said before, it's a big punishment because you won't save that 300 gold. Futures market, don't like it. So in terms of secondaries, uh, in the third runes, I'm not sure what these are exactly called, but double adapter force always. And then on the final rune, make sure you're taking what's according to bot side, the enemy AD carry primarily. Sometimes you're against an AP carry, like a high midding or a Syndra, make sure you always switch that over to the magic resist. Always take accordingly what is happening down on bot side. Going health is an okay option if you're not sure, like there could be some flex options happening in the champion selection. But 95% of the time it's armor and the other 5% of the time is magic resist. The other rune set build is what I would call the Zyra safe build. So this is the Arcane Comet build. You can use this build the, the, the first few times you play Zyra. There's nothing wrong doing that. There's nothing dramatically wrong with this build. It's just safer 
um, especially when we're talking about the double range champions that's getting quite far back. It can be difficult to land Electrocute, but you'll be able to land Comet reliably. But it is overall less DPS than Electrocute if you can get those Electrocute Brocks off. So obviously Arcane Comet to start off with with the Keystone. Mana Flow Band, absolutely no other option there. Transcendence, you could also do Absolute Focus if you feel like you're not going to get poked down still. Uh, so the options are there, Transcendence or Absolute Focus, but I prefer Transcendence. Scorch is an interesting one because it actually works with your Arcane Comet. So if say if you land a spell and on an enemy champion and Arcane Comet is one second off cooldown, but you'll apply the Scorch and then the Arcane Comet will actually trigger off the Scorch. So it's a nice little combination between those two runes. Um, Gathering Storm would be the other option if you're not looking for Scorch for whatever reason, but Scorch works pretty well with Arcane Comet. Secondaries, once again, exactly the same uh, runes as the Electrocute side. Boots, Cookies, same situation. Go Stopwatch if you feel safer, uh, uh, if you feel like you could get Tower Dove. Uh, going Cookies and Cosmic Insight are definitely options as well. And once again, keep an eye on those runes on the bot side. Make sure that you have armor or magic resistance according to what you're up against. Being asked about Dark Harvest Zyra, do not recommend Dark Harvest Zyra. Um, I would highly advise you just to stick with the Electrocute or Comet. It will be high DPS. Uh, the only chance that Dark Harvest would be better is if the game was an absolute fiesta for the entirety of the game and that you were doing well as well. Okay, we're going to jump into Practice Tool. I've been told specifically to please use the base Zyra skin. So I will do that. And for purposes, we'll use the Electric build. Now for summoners, we will be using Ignite Flash. This will be your build 99% of the time. You could always opt into Exhaust if the enemy has a lot of assassins and you're particularly scared about that. Uh, maybe they have an assassin jungler and you know you're going to be camped. Uh, exhaust could be an okay option there, but I would prefer you to take Ignite as Zara kind of requires some snowball to get going. And I didn't take base Zyra skin. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be a problem. I forgot this is a this is a skin that I worked very hard to acquire, so we'll be using it. Sorry, chat. There's no differences between the two apart from a couple of visual effects on the plants. Okay, so we also want to turn the minions off here so they don't interfere. And we'll want a target dummy up as well, which is here. Shift B. There we go. I'll just level everything up. Okay, so first let's talk about items. So items on Zyra, you'll always want to start Spell Thief's Edge with two potions and a warding trinket. Bread and butter, really. I wouldn't advise going Relic Shield. You're taking Zyra to win the lane. Uh, and then the mana regen that this item brings you will be more than worth it over being a little bit safer in the lane phase. You shouldn't have any problem getting uh, gold income with Spell Thieves as Zyra, even if you're against a difficult a lane. So it, it should be absolutely fine on the gold income front. Now Zyra has three core items. And... They can be built in completely different orders. So then the main three are Morella Nomicon, Leandri's Torment, and Rylai's. Usually I'd only mention these one by one, but it's important that I talk about all of them kind of at the same time. So ideally, the ideal build would be Leandri's into Rylai's, then into either Morello if you need the Grievous Wounds. Or Zonyas if you want some extra self-protection. A stopwatch can be quite valuable later on into the game. But sometimes if you're against a Grievous Wounds bot lane, such as a Soraka or a Yumi or a Nami, you're going to want to take a weird path in terms of Grievous Wounds. So we'll talk about that first because it's the most fundamental thing you should understand while playing Zyra because 
is very important that you understand this. So the first item you want to buy is Oblivion Orb. When you get your free boots in, you're looking to buy the Sorcerer's Shoes. So with the Sorcerer's Shoes and the Oblivion Orb, that puts you at 33 magic, magic penetration, which is extremely nice, especially when the enemy doesn't pick up no mantle or magic resistance items. The less magic resistance someone has, the more magic penetration is worth. You can get very close to doing true damage to AD carries with this. The reason why we pick up the Oblivion Orb, but we won't be completing Morellanomicon, is because the Morellanomicon upgrade stats early is incredibly expensive and it's not very good. It spends an extra 1,400 gold just basically to get the Grievous Wounds debuff. Very early on into the game, it's it's not worth it until mid to late game onwards, even if you're against an Enchanter support. Ideally, your AD carry or someone else in the team AD-wise would be picking up an Executioner's. And you can see the gold difference. If I sell this orb, it costs 3,000 gold for an AP mage to get Grievous Wounds. Whereas it only costs 800 gold for a physical damage person to do it. So you can see there's a dramatic difference in the cost. So what we'll do in the build order is you go Oblivion Orb, but you don't finish it off. Oblivion Orb by itself is a decent item and it gets you ready to buy that Morello when you need it. Because you don't know later on in the game if you're going to get kills. The gold generation will also eventually stop from the spell thieves once you hit 1000 on that quest. So it's like a very good item to say, I'm ready to buy Morello when I need it. Um, and, you know, you don't want any delay on that. Next, you want the Leandries. And then you probably want to start looking at finishing off Morello Nomicon at that point. Another really good thing with Leandries, it applies a burning effect, but it also then increases the duration of Brennanomicon. So it counts as the magic damage portion to Morello. So once that burn effect wears off, then this will the Morellanomicon will last an extra three seconds. So the duration of Morellanomicon basically gets doubled with Leandries. It goes from three seconds to six seconds, basically. So it's a like a really big buff between the two interactions between the items. And then you top it off with Rylize. Rylize is a really good item for kiting and uh, works with the Leandries and gives it an extra 1% damage on the burn. Those three items are super cool to Zyra. And then there's the Zonyas is like the fourth like extra utility item if you need it. Those are the four items that you're only going to be worrying about the entire game. Going for something greedy like a death cap is completely unnecessary when the power between Rylize and the Leandries is really strong with the plants. Now there's one other final build that you can do item wise if you're doing really badly um, and there is no grievance wounds, grievous wounds urgency on the enemy team. And that is having to buy a Rylize first. They kicked me out of the game of my own practice tool. Okay, so there's one other item build that you can do if you're doing really badly as Zyra. It's ill-advised, but there's been a couple of situations where I've needed to go this build in order to do well in the game. Uh, it is starting off with Rylize. Now, conveniently, as you may have noticed, every single one of these items has the same components. So if you're identifying that you're doing pretty badly, you'll have something like the Amplifying Tome and a Ruby Crystal in your inventory. Then you can now then decide whether or not you're going to have to do the scuffed build, which is Rylize, and then you'll be going Leandry second. Now, by all means, this is not a good path at all, and this is in dire situations where you're zero two or zero three in bot lane, and you're doing really badly, and your gold generation is just not happening. This is a good option because it allows you to kite enemies around a little bit and basically just brings utility to your team. You're kind of hoping that you have damage elsewhere, but that is the primary reason for it. You would only do this ideally in like 2-3% of your games, but it's worth mentioning that that is a valid build if you're not doing very well. So hopefully that's all the items covered up for now. You may have noticed my skin has changed as the client crashed, so we now got back to the base skin. So that is items covered, and now we'll talk about the abilities. 
So Zyra's passive is very good for pulling jungle camps. Uh, Garden of Thorns, they will spawn these little seeds when they want to spawn um, around. They'll look like that, basically, with the passive. They'll do it automatically. Um, but they spawn randomly in this circle. So at, at the start of the game, you would want to be here in your jungler's camp. If I can find where teleport is. There we go. Sorry about that. You'll be, you don't stand in the brush because there we go. The seeds just did it there automatically. If you, as long as you stand out of the brush, they'll spawn. If you're standing in the brush, they will not spawn. Now at the timer on the top right hand corner, once it gets to one minute in the game, then you want to start walking around this area and then it will spawn somewhere in the area. I found, I don't know if this is a perfect science, but after all my games on Zyra, I found it more likely that the seed was sp spawn near the, the mob if I'm jiggling backwards and forwards on the spawn location. And then once you've got your seeds planted down there, then you want to use your Q or your E and they'll tank the red buff very effectively. You can do this the same on the blue side of the, the base as well. But each plant only can tank it for the full dur duration. So it saves your jungler a lot of health, level one, with those pulls. And you can see how good those plants are taking out the camps by themselves. Back to the base. We'll talk about more about uh, plants and tanking neutral objectives soon. Uh, there we go. Right, so that's the passive explained. That happens throughout out during the laning phase. It can help you spawn an extra couple of plants. Uh, you might get a few lucky plant locations, but remember they won't spawn if you're standing in the brush. So you have to leave the brush in order for that to happen. Now your first damaging ability in Zyra is her Q. It's a line ability. So you see the first rectangle in the center, the, the brighter one, that's the actual damage. But on the outer sides, you see on the outer side of the right rectangle, including in the center, the entire big, huge rectangle will spawn plants. Blue. So in case you ever see that telegraph and you're not sure understanding what it does, that is what it's the same as well for your E ability as well, which we we'll might as well talk about the damage lines in the middle and the plants will spawn in the entire greater rectangle. So your E is the most, the highest DPS ability you have in your kit. If you're maxing, going for Arcing Comet, which means that you're against bot, a bot lane that has high range, this is what you should be maxing first. Five points in Q. It's got a very low cooldown five seconds when it's maxed out with no cooldown reduction whatsoever and it will spawn any it will spawn range plants these range plants uh, if there's any seeds on the ground and you'll be able to spawn seeds from your passive and from your W you can also use your Q ability to harass the caster minions on the back line so that's pretty useful for champions like Misfortune and Jin. So they have special interactions on if they have an if they manage to kill one of those caster minions with one of their spells, then that spell will do more damage once it bounces to an enemy champion. So Zyra is really good at setting up Misfortune and Jin specifically on those caster minions, and it's something to think about when you are playing with those champions. Next, we're going to talk about the E, the second damage ability. So we talked about the Q, and now we're going to talk about the E, the Grasping Roots. It's on a much longer cooldown than the Q, but it also has a root component as well, and it will root anyone in that middle rectangle line. The root duration increases as you put more points in. And I primarily max this if I'm going the electrocute build, because if you're going the electrocute build, you're more likely to land consistent hits off. With the E, it will spawn 
the little rooting plants as well. They do the same damage as the range plants do, but they slow, but they also have a shorter range. So they slow, but have a shorter range. Um, also, if you have two of these, they stack. So it can go from 25 to 50% slow. So if you have two of these hitting the same target, this will be slowed by 50%. Next, we'll talk about the W. Um, w is what you'll be maxing last no matter what. Maxing out your Q and your E first is worth it by a mile. W max honesty doesn't really do it much. It just brings down the cooldown of the W. That's not really necessary. So if someone were to walk over it, it's actually quite good at checking for vision in the brush. My passive just accidentally did that, but you saw the vision just pop up there. So it acts like a little ward, but then you will lose vision of that area quite soon after that. Also, if someone were to walk over any seed, they'll be they'll give that little vision temporarily. It's nothing crazy, but it's it's nice um, in case you want to face check a brush. But honestly, what you could also do as well is that you could do um, the Q and then W. And it's better to have like the, the plant in. The plant will have a bigger ra range around. So if you're worried about someone being in the brush, try and do a Q spell cast as well. But that's just something in interaction there with the W that I thought I'd mention. So you, now we're going to go through a combo. I'm not going to talk about my, the ultimate just yet because there's a lot of different things to, to interact with with the Q, the W, and the E. So one of the first things you want to learn with Zyra is that you always want to do your ability first and then your plants. That is something that might take you a couple of games to get over. A basic Zyra, someone new to Zyra, will will do walk up, try and W near them, and then do the Q. But what is way faster is doing the, the spell animation, and during the spell animation, you can actually put down plants. So then Q and then W. It's much, much faster. It works the same with the E as well. So we can do the same here. We can do E, W, W. That's something that you need to learn because it speed, speeds up that process 10 times. Also, another really good benefit of this as well is say that you are, say I'm targeting this dummy here and it's a champion and it's moving around a lot. It's going to be difficult to hit. If I miss my E, I can then redirect my plants over to that direction so that at least my slowing plants will hit it. So you can redirect where your plants go, even if your main spell misses, as long as it's in that outer rectangle that we were talking about earlier. It's the same as well with the, the, the Q spell as well. Now, we'll talk about the ulti. That is the main core interaction I want you to learn when coming out of this. That combination is extremely important. Now, your ultimate is a massive circle, and it will do a knock-up takes a little bit, 0.5 seconds, 1 second before they actually take damage from the ulti. As you may see, it's not instant. It kind of happens quite quickly, but the knockout doesn't happen until all the roots are spread out into the circle. Any plants that are inside, doesn't matter which kind, their attack speed will go up a lot, and also they'll gain extra health, but they'll still... One thing I should you should bear in mind is with the plants as well, is that they can be one hit by melee, and by Tiamat, and that was is the same as well uh, with that ultimate as well. Even though they have more health, they will still get hit, one hit by melee. So that's something to factor in. The health increase overall isn't particularly amazing, but it's mainly a nice interaction in terms of the extra DPS that you will have. Um, so, going back probably to the skill order, probably should have mentioned this because it seems to be a little bit of confusion maybe in chat. And this is how I personally do it anyway. So with Electrocute build, I generally max my E. 
unless we're playing with a Jin or a Misfortune, as I mentioned earlier, then I would do three points in Q first in order to help set up those cast dominions as I was talking about earlier. If I was doing the Arcane Comet build, I would be maxing Q and then my E. So there are two different variants that you can do with the two different builds. So that's all of the, the combinations I wanted to talk about and all the spell interactions there. All of these plants as well will also apply on hit, like the Rylai's and the Leandries and the Rylanomicon. So that's why it's pretty good in a fight. All these plants should be hitting a lot of different targets and multiple Leandries and debuffs will be f flying around as well. Especially with the increased attack speed, they should be hitting lots of different targets. Oh, in terms of plant attacking, plants will prioritize... So say in a minion wave, this plant is attacking a minion. If I then auto hit or land a spell on any, any champion, it will then focus its target onto that. There's a lot of um, targeting rules for minions like this, but if your if your plants are in range to attack a champion, but they're not, if you land a spell or if you auto hit them, they will re-switch their aggro. That's important as well during the laning phase. During the laning phase, you'll also want to learn how to proc Electrocute. Electrocute is overall generally pretty easy to, to proc as long as you can get in range. Now, it requires three damaging hits from unique sources. So you could auto attack this dummy three times and it would proc Electrocute. You could do a spell and two auto attacks. But also, plants can't as one electrocute cast. So if I try not to hit this dummy, those three plants will proc electrocute. Well, four of them there, because they're a unique source. So you could do two plants. If your spell misses, you can land an auto attack and it will proc the electrocute. So that is my main suggestion. Um, for what to do. So if you miss your ability and you've got two plants up, just, just come in for an auto attack and then it will proc the electrocute. As easy as that. That is another thing to factor into the laning phase. Now when you're going over to do objectives, unfortunately it is a... It is a cloud drake. So there's four different elemental drakes. And I'll, I'll explain why it's unfortunate that it's a cloud drake. So the best drake for Zyra to kill in the game is mountain drake. Um, all of the drakes do two damage to plants. And as you can see here, plants have four health. So they can tank two hits from a dragon. Mountain drake has the slowest auto attacking speed in the, uh, out of all the dragons. So, actually, one plant can tank a full rotation. So then, one plant can tank a dragon, and then your next one, and you'll never take damage in theory. Cloud Drake is the fastest. So, Cloud Drake is, I believe, four times faster than Mountain Drake, so it will DPS down my plants pretty quickly. The Infernal Drake and the Ocean Drake have the same attack speed, and they're in the middle range. Now, another thing about the drakes as well, Mountain Drake and Infernal Drake do an AoE uh, breath cleave at the front. So if you're playing against, if you're fighting against an Infernal Drake, you want to put like one plant in front and then one plant behind so that the other plant doesn't get hit. So as you see here, this dragon will do two damage to the plant and then two damage to that one. But it attacks extremely quickly, so my plants got melted. So we'll just punish this. You'll understand what I mean when you get into games of Zyra. Cloud Drake will be the most annoying one to have to put up with. Is extremely similar as well over to Shelly. Herald, Rift Herald. You can actually solo Rift Herald if you kite this appropriately without having a jungler nearby. 
uh, especially if you have Leandries. Um, but, you know, depending on circumstances in your game, you might not want to do that because you might get ganked and the enemy might take the Herald. But with under the right circumstances, you can do this. Shelly also does two damage to plants, including that charge there as well. And she'll and both of the dragon and the herald, they will always attack the nearest unit. And with the herald, you just want to auto attack that eye. So if you turn away from it there, and that's what you need to do. You just let the plants tank, and then you just hit the eye whenever it comes ready, and then you'll be able to do a lot of damage to it just from that. So the plants do all the tanking for you. Uh, Baron as well will do a little bit of AoE damage, so it doesn't attack the Baron quite as nicely. And by that stage, you'll have Leandries, so it might be best to let just your jungler tank it. But if your jungler is getting low, you can put some plants on top of the Baron, and that can help save a little bit of DPS to your jungler as well. But it's nothing crazy in terms of the Baron front. Okay, um, I think that's all the plant interactions, rune interactions, um, a lot of different interactions and different builds to keep up with there. Overall, I do recommend the Electrocute build, but Arcane Comet, as I have said, against double range, um, or if you're learning Zyra, it is the most basic one to understand because there is a lot of things to take in there. Um, unless there's other, any other questions in Twitch chat, um, I think I'm happy with how this guide has gone. Can plants tank tail shots? Yes, they can. So interestingly, they will take one hit. So if a minion, they, they will be on the priority uh, target as well. And okay, so if there's a cannon minion coming towards the turret, it will focus that cannon minion uh, until it dies unless Unless you walk in range and aggro a champion. So if you walk into the circle and aggro a champion, it will then switch to you. But say you have a full health cannon minion going in under the turret. And you sneakily get some plants in at the back like that. It will, all, it will still focus that cannon minion and your plants will not get focused by the turret. It's a that's a quite an advanced thing, and the and the number of cases that's ever happened in the game is low, but that could still be valuable information to understand. So as long as I don't walk into the circle and start DPSing there, that that cannon uh, the turret will stay on the cannon minion. But if I were to walk in and get aggro, it will then start the next priority target will be my plants. So yeah. Can you do W ultimate like your E and your Q? Yes, you can. So say if you're doing your ulti cast, you can then do your plant spawns and then they'll be buffed just like that. A normal plant would look like that. So you can always start off with your ultimates if you have to and then do the spawnings that you need to do. That's a, that's an important point to, to, to make as well. Thank you for that. Okay, I don't want to add too much to that. I don't want to complicate things too much, as I know there's a lot going on there. If there's something you learned here, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I'm always happy, you know, to actually have known that I've helped someone. I'll be bringing out some more support guides like this throughout the next couple of days as well. Um, we've already done Senna, and this is the second one, Zyra, and let me know what you want me to do a guide on. Uh, we've got a lot of support champions to be going through. Um, so yeah, appreciate that. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe and uh, see you on the Rift soon, maybe. Take care, guys. Bye.